Hi, right, today we're going to continue with the panel making process. Previously we talked about annealing and wheeling and shrinking. Today we're going to look at oxyacetylene welding. Now there are many people who think that you can't weld aluminium with oxyacetylene uh, gas welding equipment, but you can. And in actual fact, that's how it was done. Uh, all the Jaguar C-types, D-types, all the coach-built bodies from the 1930s, they were all oxyacetylene welded. TIG welding, that people favour now, is okay for certain structures. It's not very good for panel work. The reason being, once you've welded the component, you need to continue to rework it, re-wheel it. So panel makers weld panels together, hammer them, planish them, that is the technical term, planish them smooth, and then re-wheel it. To, to get the welds to disappear. TIG welding happens at a cooler temperature and the metal is still somewhat brittle. Also it doesn't penetrate, penetrate quite as well because the shielding gas is only aimed at the top surface of the metal and can't shield the back. Subsequently the welds are often weak on the back. When you planish them up and re-wheel them they frequently crack. You can't have panel work on an expensive car cracking um, cracking the paint and falling to pieces. So I personally still favour the old-fashioned method of oxyacetylene welding aluminium. So now we're gonna, I'm going to talk you through and explain exactly what we do. I've roughed up a piece of uh, metal here, malleted it out, run it through the wheeler machine to sort of, you know, replicate a similar sort of shape that we'd find on here. I'm going to cut this in half. We're going to prepare it and we're going to gas weld it together. I'm going to wash it off and clean it and explain about the importance of removing all the flux. We're going to planish it smooth and then we're going to re-wheel it. And hopefully we will end up with more or less an invisible weld. And hopefully people will be convinced uh, of its uh, still its merits and have a go. Okay. So we're just going to roughly cut this panel in half. It's not only important where, where, where that would be. The rough guide line. Probably want some reworking just to reposition the panel. As you can see, I've distorted the panel, that's not a very good fit. What we'll do is we'll run it through on the wheeling machine, these two pieces, to smooth them up again. Okay, that's quite good. <clears throat> so, as they say, preparation is all. So what we're going to do... Aluminium has a natural oxide layer. The oxide layer protects it, minimises corrosion. However, that impedes the welding process. Aluminium welds at about 660 degrees. The oxide layer is about 800, which means that the oxide layer is still intact when the aluminium is melted underneath. So to actually remove that problem, we can file it and wire brush it. So that's what we'll now do. So also there could be undulations and small bits from the cutting process. So we need to remove those. Ordinarily, if I was on the actual panels on a car, I would spend a little bit more time on it. But to, uh, for the purpose of the video, I'm rushing through this, so it's a little bit more interesting to watch. I've spoken to many people over the years who have attempted oxyacetylene welding and have not followed these simple rules. So we're filing the edge. Okay. So that's removed the oxide layer and any burrs that may be on those, on those two edges, but that's not all. We're now going to use a wire brush. Now, 
By rights, there are different arguments. I'm using a stainless steel wire brush because apparently steel may contaminate it. However, I've just used a normal steel file and I've never had any problems. So I don't think that that is such a hard and fast rule. But in this particular case, I'm using the stainless steel wire brush and as you can see, I'm just wire brushing adjacent to where the edge is to where the weld will be. That too removes the oxide layer. <coughs> The problem with the oxide layer is, now that's exposed to atmosphere, ideal for welding, it's starting to re-oxidise. Subsequently, it will become a problem if I leave it. So we cannot leave this too long. Once I've prepared it, we must follow the process through. If you decided to go away and have a, have a break or something like that and come back half an hour or an hour later, you'd have to repeat the process. So there's a time span limit on what we're doing. Let's just have a look now. So we've cut the two pieces in half, we've filed the edges and we've wire brushed them. They are now ready for the flux and oxycetylene welding, which we will talk about in the next video.